Hey guys, how's it going? Well, I have another interesting one here for you today. Check this thing out. So this is something that I had found um, in my trailer of treasure, and it was something that I really have um, no idea what it is. Well, I have some idea what it is. So let's just get right into it. This is something um, that I've been able to kind of identify some of its parts, but I can't tell based off of couple a couple of the other parts what it actually is. What I wanna do is ask you guys if you can tell me what this is. I got a lot of help from you guys in the past in regards to a video that I put out that I didn't know what the tube was that I was uh, working with. And you guys, within a couple days, uh, you were able to um, exactly identify what the tube was and and um, and really help out in that regards and this is another one of those things that I have some understanding of what it is based off of some of the components that are in it but I'm at a bit of a loss when it comes to um, exactly what it is and maybe there will be no determining exactly manufacturer what the actual application it was in but if anybody knows I'm betting it's it's you guys that do uh, so let's get into this here so this is something that I had found that I um, it's going to be going up on my eBay store and I was just going to put on it that it's a a amplifier radio um, now I don't know if it's a transmitter a receiver I can see here by these connections that we've got an antenna port and a receive it's hard to make out what it's saying there but this uh, REC and then ANT I see some crystals here and whenever you see crystals and I know it has something to do with um, a frequency range so let's see if it'll focus on those crystals there yeah it's kind of having a rough go you could kind of make them out there these are 7C7 7F7 7A4 so I know these are triodes dual triode cutoff pento these are just amplifiers here and then this one right here is kind of a dead giveaway a 12 au7 this is an audio amplifier or at least that's what it's off um, most often that i'm familiar with it that's what this is used for um, then we see here we've got some inductors that are tunable so that's also what kind of gave me the the idea that this is taking some form of signal. I guess I should probably start on this side. Check this out. So this is some random plug that's on here that I've seen a lot of different plugs, but I don't know what this plug is doing. I know we do have some inputs we already saw when it came to these ports here, um, a transformer here. If we look underneath it, I should probably show you guys that as well. Quite a bit of vintage goodness down here besides some of the rust and corrosion that's going on We can see a lot of this is original from these uh, mica capacitors uh, We've got a, a big power resistor here Let's See if I can get this all in frame and you guys could just kind of take a look at what's going on now, The things that are stumping me about this is number one this right here I'm gonna go ahead and flip this back over I'll I'll throw this picture up on the screen so you guys could kind of, if you want to pause it, or you can pause the video here and just kind of take a look at what's going on here. But this is one of the bits that really stumped me. If this was just an ordinary radio, I have never seen a radio with an, a milliamp meter built into it. So that was the first thing that kind of stumped me a bit. And I'm assuming you would use that during the tuning process that you can use this as you would a vacuum tube voltmeter. So this seems more like out of the realm of consumer grade and either military or commercial grade instrument here um, based off of this. The other thing that really stumped me is on this far side over here. So we were following the chain of signal. So I'm assuming it comes in here. We're injecting some frequencies here. Um, we're tuning them here. We've got a switch here that says tune and operate. So whether you're tuning it or you're operating it, I'm assuming when you tune it, it brings this into play. I haven't kind of traced out the wires and done any of that i'm just going to get this thing up and on the store but i wanted to at least give people the at least the best description i can give them of it so based off of the parts that i'm seeing here this one is a 6146 so it's an audio it's more common um audio rf vhf 
uh, that's what this tube normally performs. But when we get to this one, so the tubes get more and more odd as we go away. This one here, again, not super odd. It's a VHF um, tube, a 2E26. So this also VHF band. So now that's telling me this is out of the realm of consumer like radio, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. If I were playing one of those... Uh, those games and they were to ask my how confident am i in regards to diagnosing what this is or identifying what this is um um it's pretty sketchy i really don't know what i'm looking at other than the fact that we're dealing with some vhf could be rf uh not so much audio frequency i don't believe and really when we get into this far end over here now i'm completely out of my realm here so this tube look at this monster here so this is an 82 let's see if i can get it in focus here it's an 82 9b as in bravo and this tube, after trying to track it down, I found it's a radar. Um, it's used often for radar equipment. There's an equivalent 3E29. Check out the backside of this thing here. So when I started getting kind of lost, I just went, I don't know what I'm looking at. I could identify quite a few of the parts. We've got an air, um, an air capacitor here. So this is for tuning. You've got an inductor and a capacitor. So I know this is a tuned circuit. But the other part that really stumped me are these rods here at the end. I cannot tell what function they're performing. Let's see if the camera will focus on them there. You can kind of see them right here. There's two of them here and then here. And these are on some kind of a, they're on an adjuster like a, um, a worm gear. And as this gear pivots, then this goes up and down. And I'm just, and they look like crystals, but I don't, I mean, we've got crystals on this side. So I, I'm really at a loss. And here, if I were asked, like, identify these, how accurate, I mean, I, I'm literally lost as to what these are. What am I looking at here? What are these posts doing on these worm gears that kind of raise and lower? Um, again, I'm assuming it's this is for tuning. And then if you look, so maybe that's the path of signal. And I have it wrong all the way around where signal is coming in here, coming through this, being tuned. And then finally, this is the output section. Again, I, I don't know, but it's just a cool bit of tech that I thought I would share with you guys, let you see it. If you do know what it is, drop it in the comments um, because it's, it's helpful. And I know once this gets into its new owner's hands, we'll probably never see this one again. I've got tons of more vacuum tube equipment that I'm going through on a daily basis and getting it up on my eBay store. And usually I can kind of tell what it is. In this case, again, I've got some idea of what it is, but I really don't know. So I'm kind of putting this out there for you guys to see it, number one. This gives a really good idea for the next owner of this thing to watch this video and kind of at least see it in a different light rather than just a few pictures that I put on YouTube or on eBay. This really is a better way to look at something. So I think that's helpful. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is check this out. So see these posts here. This was something else that kind of threw me a bit. On the chassis, th these normally, um, if it's going into a box, they don't look like this. They're not keyholes. This actually mounted on something probably upright like this based off of the way these keyholes are configured. And they're on this side as well. So that tells me this was maybe in some kind of a primitive rack, like before we had standardized rack mounts that you would just mount things into, into racks. This I'm assuming is again, maybe military, maybe it's for civilian use. Not really sure. I just do the best I can when I put these items up on eBay to kind of describe what I can describe. Things that are damaged, like for example, this glass here, you can see it's kind of popped out of its case. Not by me. I'm pretty careful when I clean these. I know that there's a, a seal that holds these and I've broke them in the past. 
this one, this was the way it was. So I just cleaned up some of the gunk that was on it, blew it off with my air compressor, wiped down some of the tubes without doing my best to not wipe off any of the identifiers. Uh, usually if you see some of my tubes, I tend to, when I clean them, Let's pop this one out here so you can kind of see. And this is the way I remove tubes. I kind of, just be gentle. You don't have to rush it. Um, it will come out, just gentle wiggling, and then it, it finally comes out. And then when I clean them, you can see this is pretty nasty here. Um, and I could clean that because that's really just the name Westinghouse. Uh, but I normally will clean the tube except for the identifiers. I try to leave those alone because once you start rubbing on these, you start losing them. And then it becomes a lot more difficult to determine what the tube is. So that's just my process when I clean them. I sometimes don't even. I just leave the tubes alone, let them get into the next owner's hands. And that way it's, it's going to have all the notification at least whatever is remaining there i know i'm not removing any of it and then something else to point out you know a lot of vacuum tubes they have let me pop this one out here and again i just kind of give it a gentle wiggle and and pull up on it don't rush it it'll come out when it's ready and then once it does so you'll notice on this vacuum tube here it's got a key or rather it's got um, a space you can see between the pins there so that space will correspond with its socket, and you know you're not going to put it in wrong if you just line that up. But this one, you'll notice these are all, there's no key there, except there is. So look at this post here, and you can see that little knob that's right there. Well, that knob corresponds with the key in the socket there. So then what you'll want to do is you'll line that up. So in that case, it's pointing straight up, and then you can kind of point push that down again i do this off camera because i can't really see what i'm doing i'm looking around a microphone and i've got a monitor over there so i'll put those in here in just a bit and then i'm going to get this photographed and stuck up on my ebay store it's really some tech that is long gone i would assume this is prob probably from the early 50s maybe even older uh could be mid to late 40s i don't really know uh, you know what seeing these these mica capacitors that would kind of date it a bit but i'm curious also as to the date so maybe you guys would also know that thanks for hanging out enjoy the rest of your day or evening and we'll see you on the next video bye for now